see all the wonders of the world, they say. Attack the harbor. Is that the Lord Red? Or what's left of it? Losa, the doctor will see you now. My favorite person in the entire world. How are you, Losa, dear? It's odd seeing you here among my things, my practice. Usually it's me who visits you. He stumbles and coughs, then regains his composure. His eyes narrow malevolently. I understand you've been very, very, very busy. You're welcome in my home in this plane, Losa. But I don't remember inviting you to my little hideaway among the stars. Who do you think you are? I have to say, Adrama Leek, you don't look too good. He winces and recoils, then quickly regains his composure. Ah, no, sir. After all we've been through, you must know better than to cross me like this. 
You've seen what I've done to those who test my patience. Maybe once, before I cut you off from your precious candles. Did it hurt when I snuffed them out? Did you feel the loss of each one as their power fell away from you? How does it feel, Adromalik, to be as small and powerless as you make the rest of us feel? Shut up! Shut up! Such disrespect. I'd be a bit friendlier if I were you. But then again... I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm still going to destroy you. Stay away from me. Stay where you are. You should have stayed away from me. Losa puts a hand to her weapon. She glows with cold fire. Her radiance fills the room. She looks to you. Ready, Chief? I have given you everything. The powers of the gods. Freedom from their relentless demands. Everything I had, I laid at your feet. And you react to me with this... This anger. This hatred. It defies logic. It defies explanation. There's nothing left I can do for you, Losa. Nothing but feel sorry for you. And that I certainly do. But make no mistake. This changes nothing. You are mine. Mine and mine alone. I don't need your consent. I only need your soul. Never pick a fight with your doctor.
first.
odd-looking young woman, a woman you now know better than almost anyone, is staring intently before you. Fingers curled rigidly at her sides. Greyish-black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks, then suddenly clear. She blinks. Her bright blue eyes, bluer than you've ever seen them, shine with life. Hey. Hey! It's over! I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> she goes silent, listening. You know, I think maybe I was wrong before that I could just just get rid of him. I can still hear something deep down like an echo really an echo of a whisper and if i choose to listen she pauses one ear cocked and frowns it gets louder and if i choose not to listen she cocks her head the other way, brow furrowed, then breaks into a huge smile. I can't really hear it at all. I guess that's a new kind of freedom. Maybe not the freedom to be alone, but the freedom to choose which company to keep. She smiles and steps forward, her heat like a warm breeze, her smell like earth and leaves, and leans in to whisper in your ear. I choose me, and I choose you. I choose us. She leans back, her face shining, eyes dancing, radiating freedom, love, joy itself. So, now that my voice is mine again, wanna hear a song?
I love that song, you know, but I'm not even sure who wrote it. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was one of the voices. Maybe a bit of both. She smiles slyly, hums a little melody. Nothing you've heard before. <sighs> I guess it's time to start on some new material. Now, onward. She stops short, mid-stride. Her eyes go wide. It's... it's not... I see them all. Thousands of them. Thousands of planes. Thousands of demons. Millions of souls, lost souls. So many trapped, so many doomed. Like I was, like I was. She shakes her head, eyes squeezed shut. Someone needs to help them. Someone like us, someone like me. Greetings. I trust that the item I gave you is having the desired effect. A beautiful piece, isn't it? Have fully charged, you say? That would mean that five souls... You'll need the Scroll of Atonement. It's locked in my desk on the second floor. The password is Giora. When you have both the charged amulet and the scroll, go to the Path of Blood. On the left side of the chamber, on a pillar near Lucian's statue, you should see a hidden mechanism. It will clear the way. Good luck. Papa's permission granted. The puppet's words choke you.
The altar seems to respond. Beyond it, something... A blessed stone altar. The cool stone in the space beyond the... seems to I'll yield to none. Concoction generator.
moving to corporeal transposition engine. What the hell has just happened? Ah, pulling a lever invites a magical translocation.
something happened, I think. They just keep coming. Look around. There's got to be a way to make them stop. That must have been the last lever. Look out. I see a trap nearby. The truth hangs heavy upon the air itself, unspoken. Goodness. Here we are, Quercus. This is it. What do you mean, Quercus? Of course I'm prepared. I have my noble steed below me, and my trusted shield beside me. What more could I need? His whiskers crack into a mischievous smile. And... I may have cracked the spell that will stop the great acorn in its furious tracks, if that's what you mean. That's right, Quercus. We've done it! Sir Laura turns to you, his beady eyes shining with pride. I owe you an apology, S.H.I.E.L.D. At, but I see now that my prejudice was foolish. Without you, Quercus and I might still be stuck on that abominable prison island. Now here I am, here we are, on the brink of saving the world. Indeed, Quercus and I will find an advantageous location and do just that. Meanwhile, you must prevent the servants of the Acorn from interrupting us. Salora takes a slow, deep breath and lets it out in a rush. You feel it, don't you? It's so still, but there's something behind it, too, like a thunderclap waiting to fall. The great acorn is nearly here. Its servants are poised for impact. We've known this moment would come. Now it is time to put my research to the test. I am ready. Quercus is ready. And you, Shield? Sir Laura nods in return and grabs your pinky with his tiny paw. He gives it a decisive shake, then salutes. No matter what happens next, S.H.I.E.L.D., there's something Quercus and I want you to know. It has been an honor.
Now, onward! Come here often. I don't know what you did, but you just released a source blood. I thought I'd come and see what all the fuss was about. Should it looks like the big moment has finally arrived. I will do everything I can to support you, Godwoken. I will pray for you. I think you'll need it. Don't underestimate the power of true prayer. This is a place of incredible power. Consider it a taste of your... Of course, is a... Malady wearily truck. Looks like my... I need worship. Only one divine. You've shown me kindness. I've always preferred to be the one reaping the attention. But you've turned the tables. I suppose it's only right, seeing as how a new divinity may stand before me. Now go. Rivalon needs a new divine. If I am God Morgan. Dallas said you would come, old friend. You were always hard as diamonds, and twice as bright. Your divine welcomes you. The traitor himself, the divine you once selflessly served, the one you thought dead, lords over the chamber from a granite throne. He moves to speak, but it's Riedemann's voice that next pierces the air. What a twist. Lucian frowns at Riedemann, then bestows a benevolent smile upon you. All that you know of him flashes across the panorama of your mind. I underestimated you, Godwoken. You have proven to be a formidable foe. You have my respect. Respect? Indeed. Lucian's gaze rests upon you and goes through you. He takes your measure entirely. Lucian, we should tell him the truth. Yes, I agree. It is time we dropped our masks. Dallas nods, then reaches for the sides of her head. Where there was one face, suddenly there are four. She takes off the mask of the shapeshifter. A skull is revealed, bejeweled and ancient as the void. I am eternal. Aren't they just full of surprises? Fear not, old friend. Dallas is on the side of all that is good. She is helping me rid Rivalon of the influence of the Source. Listen to her. I shall tell you the tale as I told it to Lucian. Long ago, the Scholar Fane discovered that the veil between the world and the void was made of source. Our seven lords desired this power. Of course. Silence, slave. Our king forbade the seven to reach for this power, but they didn't listen. Instead, they rebelled and sent the king and his people into the void. With the source they stole from the Vale, the Seven created the races so they would have worshippers. Really? I'm shocked. Shut your mouth, Ifan. I know you wish not to believe him, but Lucian tells the truth. He hesitates, then he swallows his pride. Here is the truth. I have killed thousands, perhaps millions, for the greater good. But I made a mistake. It was my use of death fog that opened the door to the God King. It upset the veil and took the Seven by surprise. My one mistake meant all those sacrifices were for naught. 
Those sacrifices must have meaning. They must stop the void once and for all. I seek vengeance against the King and against the Seven. There is more, but she hesitates to share it. Then she decides that she must. I was a child when the God King tore my family apart. I was purged of sores and left to rot in a putrid tomb. A child. It was hell. A hell I suffered for the sins of my father. He was the one that betrayed the God King. He was the one that told the Seven the secrets of the Vale. The cruel joke of it all is that the same tomb that housed my tortured body is what sheltered me from the Void. Few Eternals escaped that fate. Myself, my mother, and... Thane. Yes. Thane is my father. What? No. It can't be. Everything Dallas did, it was all you, child. Everything I did, I did to fix your mistake. Our people, every purged sorcerer, every dead magister, all those weeping families, they're on your head, father. But now I have revenge. Revenge on the Seven and the God King. Revenge for what they took from me. My life. My people. My mother. The hammer's voice falters and her coolness vanishes. Every crack and rasp betrays her grief. But her next words burn not with sadness, but anger. Did you even look for me? Did you even look for her? Dallas, control yourself. Our purpose transcends your personal wounds. Yes. You... You are right. Dallas's reasons weren't mine to question. All that ever mattered to me was peace. Peace for Rivalon. Peace for me, whatever the means. And now, we are on the precipice. She sacrificed herself for the betterment of Rivalon. She didn't do it willingly, mind you. Curiosity led her to the tomb. My hunger for source took care of the rest. I presume her bones remain there. And then I took her place. Face rippers are such marvels, aren't they? It didn't take long to realize that Lucian was the key to my vengeance, and I was the key to the salvation of Rivalon. While Ballas sought the Aetirian, I started draining the gods of their source. Slurp, slurp, slurp. One more word from you and I shall use the leash. I had to hide from the gods. So I had the walls of this crypt equipped with tenebrium and protections put in place. It worked. Everyone, even the gods, thought me dead. As divine, I was created, empowered to stop the Void. I was the Avatar of the Seven, their strength and their weakness. My bond to them allowed me to drain them of their source. Yes, in a sense. When the Death Fog was unleashed, many elves died. With fewer elves to worship him, Tyrus and Dilius weakened. This gave the God King his first real foothold back in the world. To strengthen himself, he sent his Void Woken, the remnants of my people, to hunt down the sorcerers seeking to reclaim their source. The Void Woken. Disgusting things. They ravaged the land they touched and infected the air they breathed. They were also an incredible stroke of luck. You see, blaming the sorcerers for Voidwoken made them easier to capture. The Eterran now contains almost all of the source the Seven stole. Soon, we will be able to heal the Vale. 
The void shall be banished, and I, Lucian the Divine, shall return from the dead. A false divine, of course. I shall have no power. But the world will not know this. I shall demand peace, and we shall have it. The plan is almost complete. We have made so many sacrifices, Ifan. All of us. Of ourselves and those we love. One last sacrifice is required. For the future of Revelon, you must surrender your source. Decide. Be the true hero and give up your source, or be forced to submit. Like a coward. Like a slave. There is no other way. The source of the world is required to close the veil. All of the source. We only lack yours. As I say, one last sacrifice is required. Yours. We already had more than enough Godwoken. Another sacrifice I was forced to make. Those beautiful people. I was as kind as I could be. I promise you that. Good. You understand. The world shall not know this. I shall return from the grave a divine without power, yet all who desire power shall fear me. I shall carry the secret of my lack of divinity. Peace shall reign. Alexander was Godwoken. Once, years ago, I should have killed Damien, but instead took him as my son. Quite the mistake. Now, I was forced to kill Alexander, my blood. But once more, I could not. The task fell to me. And me. Ifan, my friend. These were sacrifices that had to be made. You were but one. Each of them pains me, but... I would make them all again. I made so many sacrifices, Ifan. And now, so must you. Then let us proceed. Show some responsibility, Father! Surrender your source! Sealing the Veil will lock our people away forever. They will never be free of the Void. Though if they return, what becomes of this world? Fane turns to you. In all the time that you've traveled together, you've never seen him like this. He's trembling with emotion. And you, my fellow adventurers. Together we have seen more than generations of mortals could ever see. You have seen the horrors of the Void, and I... I have seen this world through your eyes. You showed me how beautiful it really was. There is no one else I would trust to make this choice. Whatever you decide, I will follow. You'll be a hero. Everyone will know of the sacrifice you'll make. Your name will be synonymous with the survival of Rivalon. Don't let them do this to us! But... Our souls? There has to be another way. No, never! I understand. Sacrifice takes courage. Your sacrifice shall be made for you. 
Dallas. I'm sorry. You've come such a long way. But there is too much at stake. This is the end.
I call on the God King. Come claim what is yours. Tao? What? You are unleashed! Vredemann cackles in delight at this turn of events. His unbridled glee slithers into and around your pockmarked bones. You left the leashing wand next to me, you stupid maggot. So accustomed had you become to me pretending to be your slave. Kill him! Do shut up, you tedious buffoon. And don't look so surprised. As if I would allow that bone bag Dallas to enslave me. Me? You should have listened to Tarquin, you worm-ridden wench. Nobody enslaves Bracchus Rex. I am Bracchus Rex. I am the Source King. Yes, kill him. Now! Too late, you moldering, blight-stained pigs. Grant me power, my ally. God King, I call on you. You would interrupt Bracchus Rex. You would interrupt the Source King. You. The God King hears my call. He sends a companion worthy of my power. Come to your father, my pretty thing. Come to the Source King!
You're not trying to escape, are you?
Lucian struggles to rise, but the weight of his own pain leaves him to gravity's mercy. My time is done. But you, your Dallas groan. I Well then. This I never dream, let alone. I cannot imagine someone I would trust more with divinity. Including myself. Fane lays a Do you know? Here we stand. Once all my life. I will not say it. If I were to ch I'd think of i I'd think of my ch and of course Yes. I'd sit there thoroughly contented. And wait for you, I know. A mischievous but I do have likewise. This she casts after everything, Chief. You need to assess there's no one I and I know you'll do it with style. Hell, I could have told now go on. Or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? So it ended. The tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the god worker. Dallas the Hammer, the secret eternal, purged the god woken and used the source to close the veil to the void. The world was saved. Statues in memory of the god woken who sacrificed their source erected all across Rivelon. They would never be forgotten. The half-demon malady took pity on the soulless, godwoken, silent monks and brought them to the Hall of Echoes. There, from the scraps of their souls that remained, she restored them to life. Sorcerers no more, they lived out the rest of their lives, freed of the burden of being the Godwoken. Freed from the weight of the world. As for me, the Godwoken's sacrifice severed the link that bound the Sworn to the God King, and I was finally free. To atone for my sins, I spent the rest of my days taking care of the sick and elderly. Telling the story of the Godwoken, that the world may never forget the greatest heroes Rivalon had ever seen. Well, well, look what the cat dragged in. A silent monk. At least that's what you'd be if it weren't for Malady. Like I would about the return of the codpiece, that it's highly unfashionable. The man's a man, all too prone to the weaknesses of the heart. We've seen the results of his errors firsthand. I give it a week before he errs anew. Yes, well, that's to say, that's love, not... All right, all right, you made a point. Besides, Lucian. Perhaps even a god deserves a second chance, even if he is a god without powers. As for myself, I'm counting on a second chance as well. Why, I mean my empire, of course. I intend to go home as soon as I can. After all, I've dragons to raise. I need to teach them to be good boys and girls before they set the entire world on fire. There may be an accident or two along the way, can't be helped, I'm afraid. I do so long to see my palace again. The Forbidden City. The scents of spices and incense. 
the sound of sitars in far-off rooms. To sit all day in perfumed shade and watch the white of the marble change with the journey of the sun. But above all, I long to be with Sadha. Long to finally have the time to love. Oh, uh, but before you go, remember how when we first met, I took you by the jaw to inspect your teeth? Not something one forgets in a hurry. Now, if you recall, as per your own testimony, you can cook, tailor and groom. Three quite indispensable talents. At the time, of course, I couldn't have foreseen the adventure ahead, but now that it's quite over, I'd like to renew the opportunity for you to become my slave. What say you? That's settled then. You're very welcome to my house indeed. We'll feast and reminisce. But in the meantime, my boots are not going to clean themselves. grin crosses the spirit's face. Whether her smile is sincere or not, you can't be sure. Are you okay? You don't look okay. Spirit doesn't acknowledge you as you approach. He only sings, slowly, achingly, sadly. You hear, hear the wild beast just sails on the ocean. He's docked in the bay and coming your way. The cupboard can't... He pauses, then continues to hum, all the while work... I always thought that those who resorted to self-sacrifice were lacking in imagination. I must admit. A world without source is one that will need individuals of wit and intellect. A sharp mind is the only magic now. I believe I shall enjoy this new world very much. That is the question, isn't it? How does one top the greatest feat of necromancy ever conceived? I might have the answer to that. Tell me, have you ever heard of Gustafjan? No, of course you wouldn't. It's a written language. Un I intend to seek... Well, well, Quirkus. Look who finally graced us with their presence. I suppose some thanks are in order. What? No, no, you should be thanking me! I just saved the world from the great Acorn. You're welcome, by the way. Honestly, Quirkus, some creatures have no sense of perspective. A huge grin slowly spreads across the squirrel's small face. Of course, had you not stopped this god king and his lackeys, there would have been very little left for me to save, so... The cat moves forward, twisting around your legs and filling the air with the sound of dry, dusty purring. Ah, quackers! Please have a little decorum! Quirkus arches his back, almost dislodging Solora, who just smiles. This battle is won, my friend, but we still have a war to fight. We've undone the great Acorn, but the Knights of Dre are still out there. They summoned the great Acorn once, they will be able to summon it again. We have to destroy their order, once and for all. 
That is the future Quirkus and I have ahead of us. We no longer need a shield, but we are very happy. The honor is all mine. I pray we will not need to call on you, but I am grateful for the offer. I never thought I would be proud to have befriended a giant, but there is no one I... Ow! Oh, Quackers! There is no one that we would rather have walked this world with. I do not know what comes next for you, but you will always have a friend in the forest. Come, Quackus, we must... Oh, I think you have something in your eye, my friend. The cat curls up and snuggles into his squirrel friend, who quietly sits and sniffs on the deck. The purging that once silenced you remains on your mind as you approach Gareth. You are grateful for Malady's miraculous touch. Without it, there would be no you. Amazing, I'm still here. That you're here, and that you might still speak. That Lucian... I only did what I was meant to do. I don't deserve thanks. I gave only the bare minimum, and still I strayed quite far. Gareth shakes his head vigorously in response to his own emotions. Self-pity is as dangerous as any man I have battled, Alexander included. In this new world, this world without the seven gods, it's a foe I plan to defeat for good. I find a way to fit. I wasn't just content to lurk in Lucian's shadow. I was his shadow. Now I stand in the sun as my own man. I just don't know who that man is. And so I find out. My goal is to have a goal, if that makes sense at all. And if it doesn't, well, that's all I've got. You are a very, very, very lucky person. If Malady hadn't restored us, I'd, well, I'd be a drooling monstrosity, but a vengeful one. Me too. I would have made an awful silent monk. Alosa must sing, and that's that. I don't know if anyone's free of anything once and for all. But I'm bloody thrilled to be here now. Just me, myself, and you, of course. Get loot, play loot, get loot, get glad. So Chief, I guess this is it, right? Well, I mean, you can always come with me. I mean, I'm just saying, it's an option. If you want. Maybe? I still love you. As she turns from you, the whites of her eyes darken, the veins in her face go gray, and a wicked smile curls her mouth. Suddenly, it's gone again. She winks, and you're left wondering whether you saw anything at all. See you around. No more swords, no more powers. Don't worry, darling. I know you have plenty of other qualities. Reform my ways. <laughs> How adorable. No, I'm afraid I cannot escape who I am and what I've done. Her eyes flick down to your mouth. She smiles coyly, then slinks forward to her mouth meets yours and devours you with predatory abandon. Somewhere in the recesses of your mind, you think you hear her voice sigh, mine. 
But then the kiss ends. Something to remember me by, darling. Hmm. Who knows? A nice cottage someplace quiet from the Halley and I. A roaring fire and a feather bed. <laughs> Maybe. But a girl needs some fun, doesn't she? Fane is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He leaves through it slowly, muttering to himself. I see. Hmm. Intriguing. He glances up at you. Big, empty eye sockets taking in... Well, well. There you are. Another fine specimen of your kind. A little leaner than when we first met. And a little less divine than you'd hoped, I imagine. Indeed it would. Fane looks back down to the book, a bony finger running across the embossed leather cover. It could have been different, you know? I could have saved them. I could have found a way. I could have done more. So, had they decided to live in peace with the mortals of Rivalon, maybe we could have saved them. But they made their choices, and I made mine. I know, I know. The cards were dealt, and my people got snake eyes. Or something. I never took the time to learn how the average Rivalonian entertained themselves. Then again, you are no average Rivalonian. Not after this. So, what do you think you'll do, now that we live in a source-free world? Indeed, I may be one of them. It seems we are all facing a brave new world. The skeleton hefts Hubert's dog-eared encyclopedia, its weight heavy in his hands. I've been rereading this book, looking over your history once again, poring over every detail with a new perspective, and do you know what? It's shit. Fane tosses the book over his shoulder. It flutters in the air as it sails over the ship's railing and disappears with a faint splash. If you have spent your life staring at a thing, you can write about it with knowledge. You can write about it with love. But it is almost impossible to write about it with wonder. You creatures have spent your lives trudging about this world, and you've grown blind to its miracles. Take otters, for example. Energetic, waterproof cats, utterly beautiful creatures. Or octopuses. Did you know they're secretly pl Octopuses? Octopi? O octopods? <sighs> I shall have to look that up. Regardless, the world is filled with absolutely incredible sights. And who better to catalogue them with the awe they deserve than someone seeing them for the first time? Do you know? There is the idea that nothing is ever truly created or destroyed. I suppose we are all source, just in different forms. You being the cruder, less jewel-encrusted form, naturally. But my people were source too, although we didn't know it at the time. And our source helped create you. In a way, 
I was walking alongside the best version of them the entire time. In you, I found a home better than the one I was pining for. Thank you, Godwin. stands tall and proud. Sunlight Ah, there you are. More than a silent monstrosity, less than a god. <sighs> In the end, I'm not totally convinced it was worth my while to restore your consciousness, seeing what you've done with it so far. Where did I go wrong? Ugh. I'd been counting on sacrificing my health and happiness for a future god, you know, not a silent monk in waiting. Never mind, I'll find another way. I always do. She fingers the mask covering her face. For a moment, it seems as though she's about to remove it. But instead, she places a hand on your shoulder. We've come a long way together. I did my best by you all the way. Sacrificed much. And I'd have given even more to see you fulfill your destiny. She looks you up and down. I guess this will have to do. Take a moment, why don't you? Relax, enjoy. I certainly plan to do the same. I don't know, around and about. Treat myself to some mead, a lover or 300. I'd say we've earned it. Perhaps our paths will cross again. Perhaps not. Until we find out. as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to behold I will always be an ally to those that carry swords, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old, and so, as always, I am at the ready. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. At last, the world was at peace. As the races united behind Lucian, Arcs remained the center of power. The ancient Lizard Empire opened its gates. The houses disbanded, and the Empire adopted a pluralist quasi-democracy. Anyone could vote for whoever they pleased, as long as the House of Shadows approved. Justinia returns to her throne. Under her rule, the Dwarven Kingdom prospered, until two years later, a jealous lover stabbed her in the heart with a mutton fork.
Lucian made amends to the elves. He gave them lands and vast riches from the coffers of the old divine order. But the elves never forgave him. They would not trust humans again. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The black pits took fire. The oil there burns still. Driftwood became a center of industry, trade, and transport. Lohar the dwarf became mayor. His time in office was cut short by an unfortunate wound that spontaneously appeared on his neck. The Nameless Isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Arx became a great metropolis, famed for its prosperity, its culture, its diversity, and the willingness of its denizens to stab each other in the back for the slightest advantage. Sir Gareth thanked the surviving seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with peace, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han went into the theatre and became one of the realm's most popular actors. Almira and Mihaili settled down on the farm. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favour. She presumed she had them in thrall. The truth was, they just liked her. With no new divine, Malady found herself in a predicament. She had an important problem to solve, but no ally strong enough to call upon. And so her search continued. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumors of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Ahu the wizard became one of Lucian's most trusted advisors once more. He always knew that something had changed in the divine. He never discovered what that was, or if he did, he never said a word. With Lucian in power, Sahela took the elves away from the world. They grew strong once more amidst the trees of the regrown home forest. Some say her plans for revenge will bring about the end of days. Some say only Tova, her mother, holds her back. Lucian returned as divine, united the races, and became Lord Emperor of all Rivalon. Only Dallas knew that he was entirely powerless. Dallas and you. The Eternal, now known as Dallas, 
was a secret advisor to Lucian and to his successors. For eons she would walk in the world and would outlive the peoples and all and wander alone amongst the dying stars. His run-in with his daughter set Fane on a new path. He travelled Rivalon, recording the wonders he discovered, but always kept a socket peeled for signs of the Eternals. He hoped to find the wife he'd lost, but he never did. Then again, he's still looking. The Red Prince came home a hero. With Sada, he had more dragons. Soon, Prince became Emperor one who would not use his dragons for conquest. His realm knew peace, and the world did not burn. Losa returned to her music and enjoyed a storied career as Rivalon's premier musician. Dark moods would at times overtake her, and she would spend long hours walking in the wilds. She always returned with a new song. And then there was you. You returned to the world as one more human among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility, or did you rebel? Only you know the truth. Only me, you, if you, if you, if you don't, don't know, know if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're